Welcome to CAS 133, Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dells, Oregon, Mrs. Hewitt instructor. We are heading into week nine. So let's get scrolled down there until we reach week nine. It's down here a ways because the term is getting fairly close to the end. So let's kind of get started here. You've got your objectives. You've got your um, support materials. If you get stuck, you've got your basic directions. And here's some directions about the theme issue. Unfortunately, Excel, like Word, does not have all its fonts, colors, styles, all those things. And they're not like PowerPoint where I can find them and download them. So we're going to have to match colors and match fonts again. So, so be it. This is also the last week we're kind of doing it in this format. Next week will take quite a format change. So you'll want to make sure you get all the way through next week's video. And then there's some information about making videos with a PC and making videos with a Mac. For your final project, you're going to make either a PowerPoint or a video with either a, a program called Photo Story that works on Windows 7 and older PC computers or iMovie that works on Mac computers. For Windows 8, you'll have to go up to the college library to use Photo Story. It does not download on Windows 8, unfortunately. That's one reason I refuse to give up my Windows 7 any sooner than I absolutely have to, is because I want to keep that ability to have my Photo Story. Now, Windows Movie Maker is out there. It's a lot more complicated, and so we're really not going to focus on that particular um, software this term we're going to focus on either using photo story or using iMovie and if you cannot use photo story obviously you've still got PowerPoint as a choice as does everybody else so you've got some information about photo story you need to go through if you're running a PC you've got some information about iMovie you need to go through if you're running a Mac you've got your data files for Excel chapter 2 You've got your learning project to turn in, as usual, your application project, your reflection journal, and now there are two different forums this week. There's a forum for those of you using PCs to dis discuss photo story, what you've seen. Obviously, you've not downloaded it necessarily at this point and used it, but you've seen some information about it to discuss. Same for your iMovie for the people using Mac. You've got your extra credit, so you can upload either the Excel Chapter 1 extra credit from last week into last week, or you can do the one for this week. If you've not done any to this point, and this is like the first moment you're thinking about extra credit, I would say don't bother. And the reason I say that is you can't earn full credit. The most you're going to get is 20 points. At this point, if you haven't done any extra credit up till now, I would suggest you wait until we get to the final week, during finals week, and you do the extra credit final project, which is worth, again, that potential 40 points. And your checklist. So what are we going to see when we hop over to the book? Well, the book is going to take us into Chapter 2 of Excel, and you're going to get all your data in, and when you're done, it should look something like this one. In fact, it should look exactly like this one. This is kind of a light, be sure you look in your book, kind of a light green. It's not neon green, it's not moss green, it's not, but it is kind of a weird green, and it really is. So you're going to want this kind of light green color. These are kind of brown. Sometimes I get a red in there. They should not be red. Look in your book. Don't trust just this video because the colors aren't that true at least not when I see it on my screen compared to the book. Notice you're going to have to have highest, lowest, and average. Notice this one's a little bit bigger so that there's some room between. It's not just jammed up to it. Notice there's no number in this box. Notice things have two decimal points on it. I already showed you how to fix that. You've got a percentage here. Make sure you have the right number of decimal points on that percentage so that it comes out looking correct. Again, down here, you have decimal points. Notice there's a box that's not filled in. Notice there's nothing here. So you're going to want to make sure you have all of that set up. This also has a header on it that you don't see in this picture, 
but there is a header that needs to be put on this. So it's going to kind of, again, walk you through this whole process. I'm not going to take you through page by page by this point. You've done enough of it that you hopefully can follow the book by now. It does talk about copying formulas using the fill handle, though, so make sure you tune in to the directions clearly as you go. Now this is where something does change. It's using average, maximum, and minimum functions. I know that looks really scary, but really it's not as bad as you think it's going to be. I was kind of amazed when I learned it that it was as easy as it was. So just be careful that you start reading right here. Don't skip. And then just carefully work your way through the process as it tells you how to do it you'll be probably fine if you take the time to read it. Then it's going to do the lowest number and then the average. So it walks you all the way through each step. Then it does talk about verifying formulas using range finder. That's always a good thing to do to make sure things have turned out like they're supposed to. By the way, if you get a funky little symbol in your chart in the corners it's kind of got a diagonal corner marked off on it and you go over it and it holds like a little yellow exclamation point that usually means it thinks you have an error you shouldn't have one of those so you need to go back and check if it says that because that's its warning way of saying I don't think you've got this right then it's going to start into the formatting of the worksheet now at this point if you've gotten all this way without a disaster I would actually save it twice. As soon as you have all the data in, I would save a copy. Just right click, make a copy, save a copy so that you have, or go up to your save as and save, you know, Excel chapter 2, copy 1. Save it. Get this far, save another copy. That way if something goes really, really funky, and I should have told you this last week, but it is in the tips and tricks if you've read it. Um, but once you get your data in, save a copy. Once you get kind of to one of those breakpoints, save a copy. That way if something goes really funky and wrong, you can throw it away and start over at that point that you saved that copy. It will save you hours of retyping stuff in if you take care of doing that. It'll take you 30 seconds to do. And you know when you don't, it's the time it's going to happen and you're going to wish you had been there, done that. So now you're going to start formatting the worksheet. So if you've gotten this far, okay, I would save another copy at this point, make a second copy of it. So now you basically have three copies of it, and you're going to go on. Just make sure you turn in the correct copy to me. And you're going to go in here and format. This is where you're going to hit problems, probably. Most likely, you're not going to be able to find the theme. We'll see. It wants this basis theme. If you can find it, go for it. If you don't find it, you're going to just have to look at the colors in here and hand color it to match. Also, look at the font and the font style. So you're matching up your fonts as closely as you can. Looks like it's like cobalt here. But you're going to have to look and make sure you're matching up your fonts um, so that it's close. And you may be able to find the font without a problem. Again, if you go in here and you're looking and you're not finding this color, you have this more colors option and see if you could, it comes up with like a color wheel, and see if you can go in there and kind of hand pick the color that's going to be closest to the color we're working at with. That's kind of funny, funky green. It's not a bright lime green, it's kind of in the lime green family, but it's way toned down. It's also got a little bit of maybe mossy green in with it. It's kind of, it's a weird color. Not my favorite. So go in and look and make sure you have it. Also, when you set up these headers here, make sure you've got it so there isn't a line running through this. Sometimes they come in with a line, and this one does not have a line. It's not supposed to have a line. And then it talks about doing column headings and the height and all of that. Now, if you have numbers in here and you have hash marks, like the hashtags that are used with, you know, Internet, those hashtags are really number signs. They're not really 
you know, we call them hashtags now, that's the new name for them, but they're numbers, the number symbol. If you have a bunch of those number symbols in a, in a, in a cell, that means it's too narrow. You need to move it over a little bit to make it a little bit wider. You can get up here at this top and you'll get a um, up and down with two arrows on it and it'll let you slide it a little bit. Or if you just get your mouse here and you double click, it will automatically size it to fit the, the data that's in there. You need to do that because if I get it in with those number signs, i.e. hashtags, um, that's points off. So continuing to work your way through, following it all along, apply the percent style format and use the increase of decimal buttons. So you want to make sure you do that. You want to make sure you, you do the currency style so it comes up here correctly. There's a lot of little formatting details that have to be taken care of. When you go to do the colors, again, please make sure that you get a brown. It's a nice, rich, nice brown. It's not a red. And again, there's that more colors option. If there isn't that nice, rich brown in there, you can go find something that's similar to that. If not exactly. So now it's going to talk about changing height, column width, and row height. Make sure you do that so you don't end up with those, like I said, those number marks in there. And this is a funky thing on check spelling. Word PowerPoint automatically runs spell checker for you. Excel does not. It drives me nuts if I'm like taking notes in Excel to copy and paste into Moodle because I have a lousy Moodle connection and I have to do it first. I have to remember to like highlight that column and run spell check on it where I've written in it. So please know that you have to basically manually spell check Excel. Not my favorite feature either. Too many typos in my world. Talk some more about spell checker. Good, good thing to learn about. And then it talks about printing again, like we talked about in the last chapter. And then here comes where you have to get that header in. If you cannot get a head, it gives. Let's see what it does in this book. In some of the books, and I can't remember if it changed it this year, they give a really weird way to get this header open. You have to have set it in a right type of format down here at the bottom to be able to follow their directions. If nothing else, you already know from Word how to get header open. Open it like that. However you do it, just get the header opened. Because remember, you can go up to your toolbar and, and get header. And again, you can print it clean like this where there are no lines. Or if you want to leave the guidelines in here so people can follow it across when you print, you can do that as well. And I showed you last week how to turn those on over here under page layout. You have to turn those on up there. And formula view. Students will tell me the book doesn't tell me about formula view. It's If it doesn't, it's because you're only reading the red numbers and you're not reading the whole chapter. Because if you're reading the whole chapter, you're going to say, see, displaying and printing formula version of the worksheet. You need to put this worksheet in formula view. Once you put it in formula view, you need to save it. Once you save it, you should be able to submit it in Formula View to me. Almost always when students say they can't get it into Formula View, if I download it and I go to do it, I have absolutely no trouble doing it with their project. I think it's got to be Operator Air. There, so you have to click into the cells. So you open it, you click into the cell to make it kind of active. And it doesn't matter what cell you click in, as long as you've clicked. So you've got your mouse, you go in, you go click. Then you put it in formula view and hit save. If you don't do those two steps, the click in here and the save, it doesn't show up to me in formula view. Because you didn't really get it there. You didn't get it saved. 
So please make sure you do that. That is points for you that week. And this is how it should look when it's in formula view. It's not pretty. I didn't want it to capture. I wanted it to show. Okay, there we go. It's not necessarily pretty, but these are the formulas you have entered, and I can see how you have this whole thing set up. I told you there was a way last week to do it. This is the way. So I can see exactly how you've gone about doing this. And if you've just typed the numbers in, you failed the project. Because obviously you didn't learn any of these skills if you just typed the numbers in. So please make sure that you put it in formula view because I want you to prove to me that you can, in fact, put it in formula view. Now, the one thing that comes up, and I'm going to see if I can do this without totally giving the camera a fit. So let's hang on a second here so you don't see all the motion. Let's do that. I don't want to make you seasick. Now let's see if that will show it. it. Shows it sideways. Now well, that might still work though. What we need to get to is the accent key. So this is a whole lot of gymnastics here. Let's see if it works. All right. There you go. When they talk about the control key, you've got that mastered, but then they say, and use the accent key. I'm sorry, I have fur on my keyboard. It's called cat and dog. Um, this is the accent key. It lives right up here by the one above the tab, below the escape, and that's where you're going to find that accent key you have to have when you're going to put it into formula view. Okay, let me see if I can put this back. Hopefully it doesn't rustle and rumble too much for you. All right, we're back to the page, but at least I was able to show you where it talks about using the control and accent mark. So the first thing you do is click into the worksheet, into a cell, press the control and the accent mark, and it brings you up the formulas. Then you press Save or Control S and make sure you've saved a copy of it. As you do a couple more things, you can print things portrait or landscape. Portraits like those big old famous paintings of people, think of George Washington or Abraham Lincoln, and they go up and down like a regular sheet of paper. Landscape is like you turn it, a regular piece of printer paper sideways, so it's long side. If you were in school, they used to be called hamburger and hot dog. This would be the hot dog. So if you remember that old statement, and it shows you how you can change whether you're printing it in portrait or landscape. Excel normally fits better in landscape. And so a lot of times with Excel, you're going to want to be putting it in landscape to print. On the screen, you see it exact at landscape anyway. And that brings us around to the summary and into our yellow pages. So let's march along here. I'm going to skip a bunch of pages because they don't have anything to do with what we're doing until you get to in the labs. Now if you've done no extra credit up till now, I would encourage you to just wait and do it for the final project. But if you've done a Word one or a PowerPoint one, then you need to do an Excel one so that you have a third, have a second one. If you've done both a Word and a PowerPoint, you don't need to do another when you've got your 40 points. So you've got a couple in the lab choices here. I think I'm working my way off the table with that light and the lamp on this. And you actually have a third choice here also. So now we're going to do consider this your turn. Now, <laughs> this is one that can be a little bit interesting. So I want you to think about your math for just a second. If you are paying basically five cents a minute, because that's what that is, is five cents, for 180 minutes. If I'm paying 0 0.05 times 180 minutes, I'm paying nine dollars. 
in that month. Sometimes people get off with their math and I get like $200 for things and $250. It doesn't cost your clothes dryer. That's a little bit more than this one. But that doesn't cost you $200 a month to run that and you know $200 to run this. And so you really need to look at this math. Oops, I'm sorry, I haven't switched back. Let me go back here. It really doesn't cost those types of numbers to run this. This one right here was $9 for the month. So please make sure your math is reasonable. Yes, you're going to set the formulas up in Excel. Yes, you're going to use Excel to do this. But what I did on the calculator should have told your brain what logical types of numbers you're going to get you're not going to get these great big gigantic things from this. Now, granted, our whole electric bill may add up by the end, but it's usually not from your Blu-ray player. It's usually not from watching TV. It's usually from heating and cooling and you know, water heaters and things like that. So, do this carefully, make sure you do it correctly using the information you have learned in the in the um, chapter. Don't worry about it being your parents necessarily if that's a hang up. So maybe you believe that your late night studying session and household appliance using is contributing to excessive electric bills. You've decided to prove prove it wrong or prove it true, whichever way it goes by analyzing your monthly electronic consumption. So, you've already researched it. They've done the research. The project's already here. You are not going to research. It's already there. Of your personal items and appliances per hour for each item. So this table contains the data and format for the report. So this is how it's starting out. This is how it's going to be when you do it. You're not supposed to mess it around a lot. You're just supposed to kind of do the math mostly. And then you're going to do things like putting your title in and doing your colors and you could do average. You could do minimum. You could do maximum. You've learned all of that. So go ahead and put those in because those are the concepts and techniques you've learned in this chapter. But just make sure you don't get like $200 type numbers over here. You're not going to get gigantically big numbers. I'll just give you the hint. Nothing should be over 20 bucks per item. Now, this may not be current, the Dow's or wherever you live prices, but for the, this purpose, we're all using the same price. And by the way, we are not discussing that, oh, I don't have a Blu-ray player. I don't use a Blu-ray player. Or you might say, well, my clothes dryer is a normal thing. I have to do that for, you know, general life. Why is that under school? I don't know why it's under school either, really. Late night studying sessions, you run the laundry, but if you didn't do them at night with the study sessions, you would have done it sometime. But that's not our point to argue at this point. Then when you come over here to the questions, this is what throws people sometimes, I think, with these questions. Let's see if I can get this up a little bit. So I have a little more space. I'm about to drop the book on the floor. Okay, so you've looked over your results. Did you neglect to include any appliances? So this is where you can say, well, I would personally also be using a, like I'm using a document camera right now. Or I would be running whatever it is. I know sometimes people mention microwave snacks or whatever. So you can add those in your conversation here. That's not a problem. And then this talks this is a math question, really. How did you determine the costs that you used in your calculations? Obviously, they gave you the chart. So we're not talking about going out and researching, you know, BPA or 
whatever to see what their power costs are. That's not what we're discussing. How did you mathematically set this up to make it work and not end up with those $200 things? Okay, on this one, if you're going to do this, it's going to be kind of the same type of thing. You have to really think this one through, too. You work as an intern at the College Student Services Department. You've been asked to create a worksheet that will aid the clubs on campus in managing their budget. Each club is a lot of money at the beginning of the year, so that's good to know. And they can hold fundraisers to raise more money for events. Each club is required to save 5% of their income for use at the start of the next year. So here's their allocation. This book hits the floor, you hear a crash, don't be surprised. Here's their allocation. This is what they're given. Here's their fundraiser. Think through what you would need to do mathematically to figure out their, their total amount they have of operating budget. What's their operating capital? And then how much are they going to have to save to keep that 5%? Okay, so they're going to have to save 5% of their income. This is income. This is income. This is given income. This is fundraiser income. But they're both income. So this gives you the idea what they're working with, as well as their initial allotment as their estimated fundraisers. You'll need to calculate, calculate how much they need to save, as well as the average lowest and highest values for the club's budgets. And then you're back to using the concepts and techniques presented in this chapter to create and format the worksheet. So then you're going to go in and create this, format it, get it all done and ready. Then you're going to come down to the questions part. How did you decide on the formula to use for the amount for each club needs to save? Okay, that's a math question. Which formats did you use and why? So how did you format this and why did you format it this way? And which theme did you select for your worksheet? Now obviously if you only have three choices of themes, when you drop down themes, you probably used one that was there rather than trying to make your own. I would encourage you to just use one that's there because then that makes it easier to answer this question and makes your life easier for formatting it. And then again, the chapter, the, the third choice down here is that team effort one. If you think these two are hard, then this one's going to be much harder. I will tell you the first one is much easier than the second one. The second one is easier than the third one. And I think that pretty well takes us through this week. We'll see you again next week.